Uh, thank you, Tim. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, if we could just uh, skip on to the next slide, please. Uh, standards disclaimer, next slide, please. And just an overview of what we're going to talk about. Next slide, please. Um, so who are we? We are a graphite developer in Tanzania. Uh, and where are we? Uh, how is the company, company differentiated uh, from our peers? We have a very large project, 200 million tonnes. Uh, so it's tier one scale, uh, second largest reserve globally. Uh, it's also very competitive on the cost curve, which is very important for cyclicals. Um, we're also the only graphite developer globally uh, that is backed by a major anode producer. For us, that's uh, POSCO, which is the largest ex-China anode producer. And, and POSCO are backing us in four ways. There are um, in three ways, pardon me. They're our major shareholder, holding 13% of the stock. Uh, they're our life of mine offtakes partner for the fines uh, for module one, which is about 32% of volume. And they're also providing a, a 10 million US prepayment uh, to help fund development. Now, importantly, we have all of our key permits and agreements with the government in place in Tanzania, um, and we are in the process of securing debt for the project. Uh, we're targeting around 100 million US, and we're expecting indicative term sheets in hand, uh, hopefully by Christmas, uh, and we're gonna, we're hoping to convert those into credit approved term sheets um, by, say, February next year. Um, I guess the key point to highlight in this slide is our market cap's about 150 million. We've got 20 million in cash at the end of September, um, but the NPV of the project is a very substantial 2.1 billion if we can execute. So huge upside potential uh, if we can execute here. Um, and there are some very substantial graphite deficits predicted near term, um, which we'll touch on later in the slide deck. Next slide, please. Uh, so look, we have, a, we have a very strong board and management team here. Uh, I won't go through all the details here. This is on our website. But look, a couple of the key, the key details. Daniel Pantone, in terms of execution of the project, uh, he's been building mines for about 25 years. Uh, and actually, he used to work at CPC Engineering, which, was, uh, which built Cyrus Balmer Graphite Project in Mozambique. Uh, and uh, he actually was seconded to Syrah uh, and worked on the project from front-end engineering design all the way through to commissioning. Uh, and so there were some lessons learned during that process, which are actually baked into the design of our project because he's then been the study manager for Mahangi since 2018. Um, that'll probably do on this slide. Let's, in the interest of time, let's go to the next slide. Look, key point on this slide is uh, everybody knows a lot about the cathode materials in batteries. But for some reason, graphite's been overlooked, which is a bit strange because there's actually seven to 10 times the volume of graphite in a lithium ion battery as there is lithium. Uh, and, and it's in every single anode. So it doesn't matter about the different battery chemistries, graphite's in all of them. Next slide, please. There's actually two different types of, uh, of graphite in batteries. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Um, there's actually two different types of uh, graphite in batteries. There's synthetic graphite and natural graphite. Now, synthetic graphite is typically two to three times the cost of natural graphite, depending on uh, you know depending on the oil price, amongst other things. It's also very uh, energy intensive to make. Um, and so, what the car car manufacturers are doing at the moment, they're getting the range and performance that customers are looking for at minimum cost, which means more natural graphite. Now, Tesla's already at 50-50, natural synthetic, and the expectation is that uh, you're going to start to see more and more natural coming into batteries. The other driver, aside from cost, is performance. On this chart here, you can see the consensus view is that there's going to be more and more silicon coming into the anode over time to improve performance. Now, you can't intercalate silicon with synthetic graphite. So the more synthetic, uh, the more silicon you want to put into the battery, more natural graphite you're going to need. You're going to need. Now you can see some numbers down here below the chart. The expectations is benchmark mineral intelligence forecast. Demand for natural graphite and lithium ion batteries going from 182 to 1079 to 2805. That's a 15 times increase in, in the volume of demand over the next uh, over the 10 years from 2020 to 2030. So and the, I guess the key data point here is the natural graphite market is currently only 1.2 million tons. So there's, we need to build a lot more graphite mines is the, the key takeaway. Next slide, please. Um, so as I touched on, market for natural graphite is only 1.2 million tonnes. Some very large deficits being forecast by benchmark, benchmark Mineral Intelligence. In fact, the deficits are expected to exceed the entire market 
within six or seven years. Next slide, please. Uh, and what you can see, we put together the NPV for our project is, is using expert consensus pricing, which is the average of benchmark mineral intelligence, fast markets, and Wood Mackenzie. And as you can see here, real, when you overlay it on the deficits, we've got a price increase out till about 2026, and then it actually rolls over, which in light of those deficits being forecast, actually looks pretty conservative to us. So next slide, please. Um, these are the various, uh, the graphite prices for our five different products. I guess the key takeaway is in, the, in that top slide there, the first two products, the minus 195 and the plus 195, they can go into battery markets. You can see the percentage in the basket below. That's about 32 plus 9 percent is about 40 percent of our basket goes into, into battery markets. And the other 60 percent of our basket goes into much higher value end, end use products. Um, the important point to note is if the fines market does rally and those fines prices do increase substantially, we can actually crush up our large flake and sell it into battery markets if, if the price, if it made sense to do that. And in the bottom chart here, you can see the orange line. That's about the spot price for our basket today, about $1,200 US dollars a tonne uh, versus our all-in sustaining costs of about five eighteen a tonne. So the project would be viable and making 50% EBITDA margins if it was up and running today. We are not contingent on some escalating price deck. Next slide, please. And these are the project metrics. As, as we mentioned earlier on, very large potential upside here if we can execute. Uh, it's about 182 million US dollars to get the project off the ground. Uh, that's for the first module. We build it in four 1 million tonne per annum modules. The first module is gonna produce about 89,000 tonnes per annum of concentrate. The subsequent modules are funded from free cash flow. Um, and as you can see, we've got a very, very long mine life, 26 years. Uh, that's with all four modules up and running. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a slide that shows where we sit on the cost curve versus other graphite mines globally. The key point to note here is because we have a lot more large flake, that's a higher value product, that is extremely beneficial to project economics. The other key advantage we have is we can produce higher purity concentrates than most of our peers. So instead of the industry standards about 95%, we can go 97, maybe even 98%. And you get another 40 to 60 US dollars a tonne of revenue per 1% that you can increase those uh, concentrate uh, purities to. So this chart actually doesn't in, uh, encapsulate that additional those additional concentrate uh, purities, uh, the higher concentrate purities that we can generate because some of our peers in Tanzania also have that benefit. So we, if we gave it to us, we would have to give it to everybody. So we've left that as upside for the moment. The, the point is we're in the first quartile on the cost curve globally. Next slide, please. Uh, John, our CEO, likes to talk about why Mahengi. The two key reasons are geology and geography. So on the geology, there's a few key advantages. We're able to produce high purity concentrates, as I said. We've got a large, lot of large flake uh, graphite, higher value product. That gives us a really high revenue line. The geography gives us a low cost line. So the, there's three key advantages on the geography. Firstly, is we have access to low cost grid power at about eight cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, and it's gonna be predominantly hydro, which makes our graphite much cleaner and greener than our peers. We also have a train line going all the way to the port of Dar es Salaam. And the port of Dar es Salaam is one of the largest container ports on the east coast of Africa. It actually has two or three sailings a day back to China with empty containers on it. So that gives us very attractive backhaul rates back to China. Next slide, please. Uh, from an ESG perspective, we are very, uh, you know, we tick a lot of boxes on this front. And part of the, one of the key reasons is if you're targeting mining project finance from international project finance banks, you have to comply with the equator principles and the IFC performance standards. It's, uh, it's not optional. So look, we, we've, uh, we've done all of the work here. It's been independent expert reviewed. And uh, as I say, that sort of links into our debt process. Next slide, please. Um, this is a key slide. How is developing a graphite mine different to, uh, you know, a copper mine or a gold mine? And it's these gold columns here. This is called qualification. Uh, when you're developing a, a graphite mine, you actually have to send large volumes of product to your potential customers uh, before they'll sign a contract and you need the contract to get the debt to build the project. So with POSCO, we have to send them a very large uh, volume of product here. We've done around 610 tonnes of test work, which is an order of magnitude more than any of our peers. It took around four years and cost $25 million. So we're, we are a long way ahead of most of our graphite developing peers on this particular point. And it's crucial if you want to access debt to fund the project. 
Next slide. Um, so as I mentioned, the debts, we're, we're aiming to have the debt in place in the next couple of months. We're targeting up to 100 million US of debt and the construction period's around 20 months. So if we can kick off construction early next year, we should be up and running in the fourth quarter of next year. Um, the first module costs $182 million, as I mentioned. The subsequent modules are a lot cheaper. The second one's 107. Um, and so it's quite interesting. We've had a, um, a number of people chasing the, the battery material for the second module because POSCO only has the rights to the first module. Um, look, that's, I'll probably jump to the next slide there. The only other key data point here is uh, this US company, uh, Urbix, has, we've signed an option agreement with these guys to potentially lock down the fines for the second module contingent on them providing substantial funding to develop the project uh, uh, by February next year. So that's another key catalyst for the stock. Uh, look, if you just want to jump forward a, a few key slides, yeah, skip the next one. Yeah, that'll do. I'll go over to questions. No, back one, please. Yeah, uh, we'll go to questions now. We've got a few minutes left. Thanks, Stuart. Thanks uh, for being on time there. I think you're right with graphite relative to the the market chasing uh, lithium. Can you, there's a question here in regards to the political landscape in uh, Tanzania and also a question in relation to um, whether you have a special economic zone licence from the Tanz Tanzanian government. So can yep. you just paint the picture there in, inside Tanzania? Yeah, so look, um, Tanzania is a fantastic country. So I'm a former mining analyst. I've been to a lot of places in Africa. I've been to Tanzania three times. I've never seen a gun. It's, it's a very stable, safe jurisdiction, no conflict. Um, four or five years ago, they did change the mining code and introduced the 16% free carry for the government. So that caused a bit of angst back then. But ever since then, um, you know, every incremental change has been uh, has been positive. So it, I, the analogy that I draw is not dissimilar to when Australia introduced the mining super profits tax. You know, it caused some angst for a while and then the politicians subsequently unwound most of the constraints. It's exactly the same. Uh, you know, Tanzania is a jurisdiction that seems to be improving steadily every day. So, yeah, we're, we're pretty comfortable with the jurisdiction. Uh, in terms of all the agreements, we signed our agreement with the uh, with the government in, in December last year, uh, which, you know, spells out exactly how their 16% free carry works. So all of that stuff's in the rear vision mirror for us. And, and can you give us a little bit more colour? You did touch on it in terms of the physical qualities of the graphite. Yeah, so look, when I was a cell site analyst, um, I had a couple of graphite players come in and, and present to me and say, oh, our graphite deposit is different and it just so happens to have exactly what customers want. And I sat there and scratched my head and thought, how am I actually going to know if that's true or not? Uh, and I decided the only way to know uh, was customer validation. So I actually joined BlackRock around a year ago after 15 years on the sell side. Um, mainly because I think Graphrock, um, I think BlackRock has all the credentials to become the Pilbara Minerals of the graphite space. And so I've been here for more than a year, staring at one company only and one commodity only, and I've seen nothing to change my view on that. That's a um, well support, good support there. Now, what, what uh, percentage of your resources or would be suitable for EV batteries in particular? Um, it's about 40%. Of the of the product at current prices, bearing in mind that if the fines price is currently around sort of seven fifty US a ton, if the if the fines price doubled hypothetically, then then all of the we could basically crush up the entire ore body in essence and, and send it sell it all into the fines market. It's about it's about you know at the moment our, our largest flake sells for around two thousand dollars a ton. It'd make no sense to crush that up and sell it into the into the battery market. But if the yeah if the if the fines price rallies then we can we could crush it all up. Um, a couple of questions here. Um, can you give us some more details around Urbex, uh, their customers, and why the option that's been signed means for, why that option that's been signed what that means for the company? Yeah. So what the option's all about is Urbex wants the fines for Module Two, uh, and they want us to bring forward the construction of Module Two. Uh, we obviously want to build it in one module at a time to minimise dilution and ma maximise value per share. So we said to Urbix, well, we'd be potentially interested if you could if you could potentially stump up a big chunk of funding support. Uh, and the figure is about in the order of about 50 million US. Uh, and so look, they're in detailed discussions with a lot of US OEMs and car manufacturers. Those discussions we hear are actually going pretty well. Uh, so look, stay tuned, keep your eye out for, you know, a big US battery manufacturer or OEM investing in Urbix, because we're hopeful that that same entity investing in Urbix may invest in us. 
Understood. And, and can you provide a little bit more details around the debt funding, uh, around the amount you're seeking and how you would address any potential shortfall? So, yeah, look, we are seeking around 100 million US. Um, and at this stage, there's a number of options to, to fund the balance. Obviously, you know, the, the vanilla option is to, to raise equity. Um, we're hopeful that POSCO will support that equity raising when the time comes. And obviously, discussions are underway on that front. Um, and interestingly, POSCO has some very aggressive growth plans. So they're planning to grow their anno business to 320,000 tonnes per annum by 2030. And if you do the numbers, that means they're going to need about 420,000 tonnes per annum of graphite concentrate. They've only secured 30,000 tonnes through us. That's module one. So we think they need module two, module three, module four. Um, and, and look, we're, we're, we're in detailed discussions with them on that front. So... We'll see what that Stay gets to. <laughs> Stuart, that's all we have time for. There's a number of questions online. If you've got uh, five minutes just to answer those, sure. it'd be uh, much appreciated. We'd be happy to. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Stuart.